Fighting words. What about fighting words? This is another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast hosted by yours truly, your intern forever, entry level associate, Alex. Powered by Incorporating Associates. Visit us on Instagram. Handle is at incorporating underscore associates dot IA. You can also subscribe to us on Patreon, the Corporate Cowboys podcast. You want to shoot us a small donation that'll go towards legal fees and expenses. Do so. Venmo, that's Alex underscore Coco, Cash App, dollar sign, Corporate Cowboys, and uh, PayPal, paypal.me slash Corporate Cowboys. Fighting words. How do you fight with words? How do you how do you war with words? Better said, because it's a fucking war at the end of the day. What you want to do is assemble your troops. That is, assemble your characters, assemble your ideas, your sentences, your prose. P R O S E S, proses, <laughs> and your cons. And be able to emphasize those pros, be able to assert those pros, be able to litigate on those pros, and at the same time, discount all of the cons. Dismiss, absolutely eviscerate, and destroy the cons. That way, your opposition, I mean, you you stand a, a, a better likelihood, you stand... Um, a better chance of convincing your opposition that you're right. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. Because when you go to war, <laughs> when you go to war, yes, you will butt heads. There will be a clash of ideas as, um, what's his face? Was it Smith? Smith on the marketplace of ideas. I'm forgetting his name. John, John Stewart, is it Miller? Or Smith, John Stuart Mill, <laughs> on the marketplace of ideas where ideas clash and the better ideas reign. The better ideas come out victorious. The better ideas overcome. The better ideas just are better by nature. So in order to have a better idea, you need to have an idea first and then be a... An advocate, be a soldier for the idea, be under command, treat that idea in that instant as your calling, you're fighting for this idea, you will kill spiritually, professionally, <laughs> professionally, you will fucking murder for this idea. And you, but you can't be too aggressive about it. You can't put your hands around somebody's fucking neck figuratively. You have to do it metaphorically because figuratively jumping on somebody's neck is still treated the same intellectually as it is in reality so you can't just be pounding ideas down somebody's throat it won't go well i mean there are i mean at, at extremes there are times when you do want to do that um and that's usually just before actually actually killing somebody <laughs> When you're when you're giving somebody the last rights that you were right, <laughs> and and in war that's essentially what happens. You carry an idea, an ideology, some sort of mission in your mind, and your opposition has the same in their own in their own mind. They have an idea, they have an ideal that they're carrying forward and are willing to kill for. They're willing to kill you for it, and. Um, well, in war, there's not a whole lot of talking. So you absolutely can jump on somebody's neck. You absolutely can gun them down in the name of respect. Just to prove that you were right. Just to prove that your idea was better. And yeah, I mean, to the victor goes the spoils. To the victor, for the victor, history is written. And um, the same goes in corporate but at a very, very smaller scale at the independent level. 
at the micro level, not the macro level of, of war between nations and civilizations, but at the, at the micro level. I mean, and you, you can still be like one notch below macro at the, at the mezzo level, right? There's like macro, the, the largest mezzo. Uh, an intermediate level, you could say, within organizations and between organizations, between corporations, which is how, um, which is just how market competition works, right? That, that's at the meso level. That's what conflict looks like at the meso level. And then there's at the micro level. You have motherfucking corporate cowboys shooting each other down for ideas, and um, it's war. It it absolutely is war. I don't know if over the course of this podcast you've come to believe that all corporate cowboys are somehow aligned. All corporate cowboys are somehow <clears throat> friends. But that's why I've never used the term friends, really, to describe a corporate cowboy. A corporate cowboy is just a professional. Can they have the potential to become a hired gun? A soldier, informed with an idea, with an ideal, with a mission to carry out, and they'll kill for it indiscriminately. But corporate cowboys who choose to remain consummate professionals do question orders. There are those who who, who just become corporate drones, essentially. And yeah, I mean, you could say that they're not that they aren't corporate cowboys. Um, they're not the embodiment of a corporate cowboy. They might act like a corporate cowboy and actual corporate cowboys might use them as, as stepping stones. A, a capable corporate cowboy is able to use anybody as a fucking stepping stone and still not offend them. Why? Because a corporate cowboy, when they operate, when they move, they exude a vibe, a mood, People can just see that they're about something different. <laughs> Otherwise, they would be working for the same corporation that they find themselves in. <laughs> Corporate cowboys on the run, always on the move, constantly. So don't get in their fucking way. You're liable to get hit. <laughs> and yeah, corporations do hire, um, sometimes they, they go out of their way to hire uh, effective hitters capable of putting corporate cowboys down. And that's only because corporate cowboys operate on the individual, in an individual capacity at the micro level. So when they're going up against organizations, corporations that are, you know, in a meso level uh, what is it called? At a mezzo level of power, at a mezzo level of resources, yeah, they, they might have a, a little bit more change in the form of cash. I mean, a little more ching-ching to throw at somebody to put a corporate cowboy out of commission. I've seen it. It happens. <laughs> it's sad to see, but it fucking happens. That's reality. But corporate cowboys are faster. They're smoother. They're less rigid, less structured, more flowing, more artful. Doesn't mean that they're not scientific. Doesn't mean that they're not precise. Doesn't mean that they're not surgical with the fucking steel when it comes down to popping caps. <laughs> that all goes hand in hand. But a corporate cowboy as an individual can turn on a dime. Corporations can't do that. Corporations are like a yacht, or like a boat, a ship, a train. It takes forever to get turned around. <laughs> you can't turn a boat on a dime. You need time. You need space to do that with. Unless... Unless the boat, in this case, unless the corporation has a designated, a person designated 
to um, address address those issues, we'll call them, yeah. Because a corporate cowboy can be an issue. A cor- corporate cowboys can be seen as thorns in a corporation's side. Which is weird, I mean, because that, that implies corporations are imbued with this sense of entitlement, like they own the market, and that's just not true. You ever rip the corporation's side open? What comes out of it? It's just, it's just public relations. It's just PR. <laughs> just money. They bleed money. <laughs> oh shit. They bleed. They bleed. Um. Yeah, that's about it. They bleed market share. The market share they thought they had. Because if that were the case, then the market would. The market itself would come to protect them. They wouldn't need subsidies they wouldn't need government protections (laughs) the market would see the value in a corporation and stand behind it to protect it that's like i guess i could i could analogize it to like a schoolyard bully and i mean i've been on the receiving end and i have been on the giving end of um of bullying and i don't I don't necessarily ad- advocate for it, but I'm also not against it. You know, in certain in certain instances, in certain contexts, a bully is just another tool, another feature to life, another stepping stone if you know how to work around them. Absolutely, I feel bad for the victims, especially if they don't deserve it. But there are some motherfuckers who do deserve it. Maybe they got a complex. They need to be put in another place. Maybe they have some kind of so- social issue that they have to learn through a punch to the face. They exist in corporate also. <laughs> they also exist in corporate. So the schoolyard bully being protected by, say, the school... It, it it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I would get it if the quote-unquote bully was like a hero who was constantly, I don't know, in, innovating the politics of the yard. Fuck, school sounds like prison. <laughs> if, this, if this savage, if this motherfucking killer was innovating politics for the yard, for the rest of the student body. Yeah, because I'm still thinking of prison. If they were innovating politics, if they were innovating activities, if they were innovating the environment, the ambiance for the rest of the student body and making school a better place, i.e. the markets, if they were making school a better place, you think if the bully ever got knocked down, they wouldn't be protected? Of course they would. They would have the respect bordering on love from the student body. Now flip it. Where the bully's just a piece of shit. Where the bully's constantly fucking up. The bully can't do anything right. Not even to save their own life. So you have motherfuckers like me. Run up on them. Hit them once or twice. Poke them. Where it hurts. (laughs) And what happens? If the school comes and, you know, labels me the bad guy. More than happy, baby. Thank you very much. That's just what I do. It's it's what I've always done. And in some cases, I've been painted in a grayish light. I'm not always the good guy. I'm not always the bad guy. But I'm known where I go. The people I closely associate with. I'm a cowboy. I shoot from the hip. Especially if something doesn't feel right. I'm the type to ask by looking first. Because, yeah, I I aim where I shoot. I'm not just fucking spraying and praying. Thankfully, those situations are exceedingly few and very far in between. In corporate...
You have to know who the bullies are. You have to know what the bullies do. Those fighting words I was talking about earlier, some bullies don't even know how to fucking use them. And you absolutely can bully with just words. And it's not name calling. It's again, assembling words, assembling sentences, paragraphs, whole oratory presentations. And they don't even have to be long. They don't have to be the episode of, they don't have to be a, 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 the length of an episode of Corporate Cowboys like you're fucking <laughs> preaching, like you're fucking speaking in public, giving this speech. Not at all. It could be quick. It could be one word. Just the way you say it. The way you deliver it. It could be a look, even, without saying anything. <laughs> Business is war. I've been saying this from the very beginning. And as a corporate cowboy, you cannot choose who to side with. You can only choose to be good. You can only choose to do better. So during the war and in the marketplace, you know where to look and you know who to hit. 